Hello everyone, I'm Thomas and welcome to my education channel where I demonstrate how to build IoT web development and serverless projects step by step. Today in a quick 20 minute video I'm going to show you how to get started with ESP32 microcontroller completely from scratch. As the first step, let's have a look at the hardware. So as for the hardware, I've got only two elements today and that is ESP32 development board. And here actually I would like to point out this very important difference between ESP32 microcontroller and this development board. So the microcontroller is just this element over here, this chip, and without any extra hardware components we're not really able to connect it to the computer and upload the code from the computer to the controller. And this is why we use development boards. The one I've got is not MCU32S, one of the most popular ones. As you can see, it has micro USB port here, so we can connect it to the computer. In order to do that, I've got this USB-C to micro USB cable. However, what type of cable you need might depend on what ports you've got on your computer. If you don't have USB-C, you can go for this one. This is a standard USB type A to micro USB obviously because this port is micro USB. One important thing about cables, some of them just don't work. So first of all you want to make sure they support data transfer, but also it is recommended for the cables to be uh, a bit short. So shorter cables usually work. If you want to be 100% sure, have a look at the description of my video. I left the links to the cables you can get that I tested myself and they guaranteed to work. Okay, right. So now that we know what I'm going to be dealing with, let's have a look at today's to-do list. So here I'm going to start from a quick ESP32 overview. Then I'm going to move to USB to UART driver installation. This is required to be able to send the code from your computer to the microcontroller. Then next step, IDE installation and our IDE is going to be platform IO. This is an extension of Visual Studio Code, so I need to install Visual Studio Code first. Next step, creating new project. So I'm going to show you how to create one with platform IO. And finally, I'm going to write some code. It's going to be very simple, hello world application, just sending some text from the device, from microcontroller to the computer, displaying it on the screen in a serial monitor. And I'm going to make the diode on the development board blinking. Right, and that concludes to-do list. Let's have a look at the overview now. And for the overview, I'm not going to go much into details. However, if you are interested in a full specification, have a look at the description of the video. There's going to be a link there. Um, here, I'm mainly going to talk about the main feature of ESP32, and that is a connectivity, right? So these two points, built in Wi-Fi and built in Bluetooth. Because connectivity is actually what makes this microcontroller great for IoT, Internet of Things applications, right, or projects or, you know, prototypes of devices. And on top of that, uh, we have a very good quality, pretty decent one to the cost, right? The device itself, the development board is quite cheap, it's between six and twelve dollars and you getting um, a decent processor speed, memory and power management for that price. And also, of course, compatibility with Arduino framework, right? So you can write the code just like on Arduino with this microcontroller. This makes it very easy to get started with. You just need to write some code, use platform IO or Arduino IDE, and just upload it there using the, the built-in features of these IDEs. Right, so that was for the overview. And now let's move to UART to USB driver installation. But before I download any software, I need to have a look at my development board because there are two main types of these drivers and which one we need to install depends on the bridge that you've got installed on your development board, right? If your bridge is more like a square one and you can read um, CP210 and X where X is a number from 0 to 9, usually it's 2, then the driver you need is CP210X, obviously. 
Um, otherwise, if the if this chip, this bridge is a rectangle, it's probably gonna be CH340 or something similar, right? So this is a different type of driver. Once you identify that, um, go to the description of the video. You can find the link to the driver depending on what model you have. Let's have a look at my Note MCU32S. What kind of bridge I've got installed there? So here's my Note MCU32S. Um, this is the bridge we interested in. Um, as you can see, it is a square shape, and uh, if you use magnifying glass, you can actually read a CP. 2102. So that's my model. Okay, as I have CP2102 bridge, I'm going to um, install this driver, right? That's the official website. We need to go to downloads and then we can pick the driver depending on the operating system. Because I'm working on Mac, I'm gonna go for this one, but as you can see, you can download Windows driver. I think there is even a Linux one. Right, so all the major operating systems. Let me just download this one. And I'm going to download it, then unzip. And this is the folder with unzipped files. I'm just gonna have to double click on DMG file. And then this is the actual driver. I'm gonna open it, and then continue, continue, agree, continue again. I need to provide my password um, again. And I've got some message about blocked extension. This is actually quite important. So I need to open security preferences. And then on the padlock, unlock my Mac again. And that should be, okay, I need to click on details and then tick this one, right? CP210X VPC driver, click on OK, and there we go. I can close this window now, and as we can see, the driver is installed. Yeah, it's probably not going to be looking like this for Linux or Windows, but there might be other um, security uh, settings that you need to change, but you should get an uh, appropriate notification telling you what to do. Anyway, I'm going to move on, so I'm going to close this and now let's install Visual Studio Code with Platform I.O. So I'm going to close this one and this one and let's paste in code.visualstudio.com URL. Uh, you can find it in the description of the video. The installation of VS Code is pretty straightforward. This is going to detect your operating system automatically, so the only thing you need to do is just to click on the download button. Wait a few seconds, then save it on your disk. Unzip downloaded file. If you are on Mac, this is probably going to be zip. Um, on Windows and Linux, this might be a bit different. Um, so for Windows, for example, I think you need to go through the uh, setup, right? So the, so the install, the setup wizard. On Mac, uh, the only thing you have to do actually after unzi unzipping this is to drag Visual Studio Code and drop it on applications. And that should be it. You can actually go to applications now and just double click on Visual Studio Code. That is gonna, after clicking open on this notification, that's gonna just open Visual Studio Code for you. Right, okay, so we've got a better installation. Let's add extensions now. So I'm going to go to the extensions here, type in platform IO. Then I'm going to hit install here in the first result. And after a few seconds, I should have platform IO installed. Okay, nice. So this is done. Uh, let's see if C, C++ extension is also installed. Okay, yeah, now it looks like it is installed as a default. If it's not for you, make sure this is installed as well. Right, um, another, another useful extension maybe let me show you is CLang format, this one. Right, so if you type CLang, um, this one is very useful for the autocode formatting. It's going to add the new formatter to Visual Studio Code. So now once you've got this one installed, you can go to Code, Preferences, Settings, and then type Format. And here in the default formatter, you can change None to CLang Format. 
and then tick these options format on paste and format on save and you can also do format on type so you will have uh, this uh, code auto formatted i mean all c++ c c++ code uh, auto formatted right okay so we've got installed platform io you see there is a new icon in here i can click on it and that should uh, show me the quick access menu if i click on open here I'm going to see the home screen of platform IO and a button new project. This is how you create a new project. Basically, I'm going to click on it now. And here I'm going to pick the project name. Let's call it ESP 32. Hello world. And now this is important. So the board we want to select depends on the development board that we have because I have MCU node MCU 32 S. I'm going to pick this one up. So let me click on this framework. I'm going to keep Arduino and the default location for my project. So I just need to go on and hit finish. It should take a few seconds and there we go. We've got our project created. Let me just quickly go through the directory structure. So um, a first folder is the include. Um, this one is for the header files. You can go uh, through the readme to familiarize uh, yourself with what should be in there. But yeah, essentially header files. Then we have a lib folder. This is for any sort of libraries that you want to use your own or external libraries that you can copy in here. Uh, then we've got SRC. This is the most important one because we've got main CPP. This is this is this is the starting point of our programs, of our applications that we upload to the board. And here, this is a good old Arduino way of developing here, right? So we've got a setup, setup function and a loop function. Let me just remind you, or if, you, if you're not familiar with this yet, setup function is the one that is executed once at the very beginning when you supply power to the board, right? So when you connect the power source or USB, this code is going to execute first and just once. And then what's whatever is in the loop is going to execute continuously, right? Like in the loop. And that's going to be executed as fast as possible. So as fast as the board can do it, right? So it can be many times unless you use a delay function that's going to just delay our program a little bit. But we're going to go into this once I start building the first Hello World program. Right. Next folder here is the test. So this is where you put all your uh, unit or integration tests. And we've got the git ignore and platform io.ini, very important file. This is where we keep all the configuration. And actually, since I've got this file opened, I'm going to set a new setting here called monitor speed. I'm going to set it to very specific value. What this value is, is a boat rate. So that's the number bits per second of the data that we can send over the serial, right? And serial communication in our case goes through the USB, right? So this is all the data we send from the microcontroller to our computer to this IDE. And uh, uh, for example, this can be just a simple text, right? Like a printing something out that we can read here in IDE um, in a serial monitor that I'm going to show you in a second. OK, but how to actually print something out in the code? Let me just show you. So first we are going to set this up. So I'm copy. I'm going to copy this value and then in main.cpp, I'm going to remove these comments and just type serial begin and I'm going to paste this value over here. This initializes a serial communication. And now since I've got this initialized, with serial begin, I can do serial print ln to print out line, just a message, send it over USB to the computer, and then read it in the serial monitor displayed on the screen. So yeah, let's just do something like a hello from the setup. So we will see this will be displayed only once. And then I'm going to do something very similar, but this is going to be hello from the loop. So we'll see this message displayed continuously. However, we don't want this to be displayed too many times. It's going to be, you know, thousands if we don't restrict it in any way. So I'm going to, at the very beginning, add a function called delay. 
So that stops the execution of the program for one second. Okay, so whenever this loop is called, but it's gonna be called continuously, we will have a one second delay. So sleep for one second, something like that. Right, and additionally, as I promised at the beginning, we're going to have a diode blinking, right? To blink the diode, we need to use two different functions. The first one is called pin mode. This allows us to set the way we're gonna use a specific microcontroller's pin. So basically, if we want to uh, read a voltage from it or we want to set a voltage on it, right? In our case, we're gonna be setting the voltage. So what I'm gonna do is to use built in, uh, sorry, LED built in. That's a constant for the built in diode, the pin that is connected to it. And for the mode, we're gonna use output because I would like to control the voltage. I would like to set it, right, high or low. When I set it to high, the diode is gonna be on. When I set it to low, it's gonna be off, basically, right? So that's what I'm gonna do with the pin mode. And now the second function is going to be a digital write, right? Because since I, I'm gonna be setting the voltage, we're gonna be writing to that pin, right? So I'm gonna use let build in again as for the pin. And then for the value, I'm gonna use uh, another constant called high. So that's gonna set the voltage to high. It's gonna switch the diode on, right? Then we're gonna print out the message. And after that, I need another delay. So we will actually see the diode blinking. Otherwise, it's just gonna stay uh, on. Actually, I haven't switched it off yet, right? So that's gonna be the next step. So we'll have delay and low, right? But yeah, this delay again is important here because if it wasn't here, then we won't even see the difference. It's just gonna be, um, I think it's gonna be switched off here because it's gonna switch on and off automatically. There is no delay here. It's gonna happen very fast, but with the delay, there's gonna be, you know, one second sleep. So we'll see this switching on and off. Right, okay. And this is it for the code. That's what we need. Because, you know, after this line, the loop's gonna start again. So we'll have another delay, then on, then delay, then off, another delay, on and off, and so on. So we we'll, should see the diode blinking. Okay, now is the time to upload our sketch, our code, right? In order to do that, let me build it first. So let's make sure I haven't made any mistakes. To build the code, I just need to click on this checkmark button here. That's platform IO build. So just clicked on it and we should see in a few seconds a success message. Right, okay. So yeah, that was successful. And now I'm going to deploy the code, right? Send it to the board. For this one, two important things. First, you want to make sure your development board is connected to the computer, right? Using the USB cable. And secondly, you want to find the boot button on the board and keep it pressed when you actually start uploading it, right? So I've just pressed it, holding it. I'm clicking on this button, the arrow one, right? And now I see this code deploying. I don't need to hold it anymore. And that's it. The code is deployed. You should see the diode blinking, the blue one already. And now let's have a look at the serial monitor. Let's see if this information is printed out. In order to do that, we're gonna need to click on this button over here. And then this is gonna ask us what port we would like to use. And what we're interested in is either this one, in my case it's three or five, or sometimes it might be just one, so it's gonna just pick it up automatically. In my case, I need to type this three or five, doesn't really matter, it should be all good like regardless of which one you pick. And there we go. We get the messages, hello from setup, hello from the loop. This is happening continuously every uh, two seconds, I think. So, so there we go. This is working, right? Now, additional thing I can do is to reset the board using the other button, so not the boot one, the EN one in my case. When I press on it, this code just starts again, right? So setup is called once and then the loop is called continuously. And this is it for today. Thanks for watching. If you are interested in seeing more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you will stay up to date with any new videos. If there is a project you would like me to build and make a video about this, let me know in the comments. Thanks again and bye.